Item number, SCP-396, Object Class, Keter. Special Containment Procedures. A geolocator has been affixed to SCP-396 to track its movements. Local Foundation liaisons have been dispatched to locations where SCP-396 frequently manifests to facilitate prompt recontainment. An airborne amnestic compound has been infused into the cushions of SCP-396 and into its containment chamber as a precaution. When possible, SCP-396 is to be contained within Area 93. Foundation personnel are not to mention any location or event taking place outside of Area 93 when they are within SCP-396's containment area. Failure to comply with this can result in demotion to level zero and is to be treated as a disclosure of classified information. Current theories on enacting permanent containment are currently focused on finding ways to utilize SCP-396's awareness of its surroundings to create controlled environments and induce it to teleport there, which SCP-396 may become settled in repeatedly appearing. This closed-loop theory of containment is currently under consideration by the Area 93 leadership. Description: SCP-396 is a chair constructed of plastic and steel. At statistically random intervals, usually between 1 and 11 months, SCP-396 will displace itself and another chair somewhere on the planet Earth. Any living matter that is seated on SCP-396 or the seat it is displacing will also change places. This change is instantaneous. The approximate limits of this teleportation are unclear, but SCP-396 is currently believed to be able to transport itself to any location on Earth. SCP-396 was discovered in a theater in Originally, it was classified as safe, as its area of effect was believed to be localized. As such, junior-level researchers were frequently assigned to work with it. It is believed that SCP-396 is able to listen to nearby conversation and transported itself to locations mentioned by its research staff. Containment procedures and classification escalated until reaching their current levels. There are currently 1,046 locations that are known to have been discussed or mentioned in passing around SCP-396 that it may affect. It has been shown to be much more likely to affect locations that were mentioned repeatedly or in great detail. A full list is considered to be impossible due to incomplete records of SCP-396's early time in containment. Locations SCP-396 has affected Cruise Ship Located by junior researcher Bland while on vacation, after witnessing it manifest on the deck of the ship, Bland contacted the Foundation, and classification was upgraded to Euclid upon recontainment. Theorized to have imprinted on Bland during his time working with the anomaly. Site 77, second level research floor. A researcher who had transferred from Site 77 is known to have mentioned their previous work there which is the initial link leading to discovering the cause of SCP-396's escalation of anomalous activity. Death Row D-Class personnel assigned to testing had been asked to state their name and point of origin while in a testing chamber with SCP-396. D-936816 mentioned that data expunged penitentiary at least two times during testing. Three months later, SCP-396 displaced itself in the electric chair located within this facility. Due to the fact that an execution was about to be performed prior to this displacement, it was only the timely intervention of local agents that prevented major amnestic intervention from becoming necessary. Upgrade to Keter put under consideration. Area 93 Washroom Review has shown that Researcher Park mentioned recent renovations to the Area 93 washroom when discussing their work environment with a colleague. Notably, this took place in a soundproof chamber, previously thought to be safe from SCP-396's anomalous effects. U.S. Supreme Court, Washington, D.C. Supreme Court Justice Abe Fortas's seat was replaced by SCP-396 after he had arrived within the building but before taking his seat. It was not noticed until the end of that day's hearing, when Justice Fortas reported it as unusual to members of the Supreme Court police. 
Foundation personnel involved in the case were able to intercept documentation of the incident and recontain SCP-396. Set of talk show. A vacant audience member's chair was displaced during the live broadcast of the show, although its presence was not detected until after the show was over. Suppressed footage of the show shows that SCP-396 is clearly visible when the camera is pointed at the audience. This footage has since been replaced with a doctored copy in archives. Although recordings of the original broadcast have not been completely suppressed due to their widespread nature. Shikra Roller Coaster, Orlando, Florida. SCP-396 manifested in an empty seat during the ride's normal operation. Agents were able to recontain SCP-396 within two hours of displacement, as the ride was shut down following the operators noticing the unusual seating and alerting their management. Agent Elaine was commended for also suppressing the souvenir photo taken on the ride. Vatican City Pope Paul VI was displaced, along with his throne, and appeared within Area 93, disoriented and confused. Light dosages of amnestics were able to convince His Holiness that the incident was a religious experience, and a deal was struck with Vatican City government officials to prevent widespread coverage of the incident. Addendum SCP-396-A On 9-18-19, during regular testing of SCP-1609, the anomaly unexpectedly began to show aggression towards D-939668. However, before any personnel could be injured or killed, SCP-1609 was displaced by SCP-396. Due to SCP-396's more remote location and secure containment chamber, there were no casualties, and SCP-1609 was recontained without additional incident. After the incident, it was found that D-939668 had previously worked as a contractor in the construction of multiple GOC facilities. Security data is being reviewed to find out how SCP-396 was able to displace itself to Storage Site 8. Item Number SCP-301 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-301 is to be kept in a secure electromagnetically sealed bunker, buried under at least 10 meters of Earth to conceal its location. The bunker is to be staffed by no fewer than four Level 3 security personnel at all times in order to secure the site and to maintain automated security measures. The perimeter of the bunker is to be lined with a chain-link fence with official warnings to deter intruders. Due to the remote location of SCP-301, additional security is not required. During experimentation, all research staff and equipment must maintain a minimum distance of at least 3 meters from the projected edge of SCP-301. In the event of a containment breach, on-site personnel with the proper security clearance are authorized to implement Emergency Protocol C-301. All possible entrances to the bunker will automatically seal themselves and remain sealed indefinitely. Emergency Protocol C-301 can only be countermanded by an O5 level command. Description SCP-301 is an anomalous region roughly 3 meters in diameter, located in the middle of National Park. Whenever physical matter enters SCP-301, it temporarily disappears from existence. Following a delay of variable length, the matter that had entered SCP-301 will appear in another location. The duration of this time delay is variable, with a minimum length of seconds and a maximum length of minutes. The exact destination appears to be a random vertex point on a geodesic grid overlaying the Earth's surface. Each leg of this pattern is approximately 20 kilometers long, resulting in possible destination points. The prevailing model of SCP-301's workings is that teleportation occurs by accessing a coterminous interspatial region, lying in a frame of reference attached to the center of the Earth. SCP-301 is invisible to the naked eye, but is detectable through other spectra. SCP-301 also passively emits electromagnetic energy. While not harmful to living organisms, it does interfere with improperly shielded electronics and may explain why the native fauna does not venture near SCP-301. Through experimentation, 
It has been discovered that SCP-301 can accommodate any kind of physical matter with certain size thresholds. The maximum size object that SCP-301 can accommodate can be no larger than SCP-301's 3-meter diameter. There is also a minimum limit, though this is based on density rather than size. Currently, most gases and anything on a molecular level are not affected by SCP-301. For further details, see the experiment logs. SCP-301 was discovered when there was a spike in disappearances of hikers and tourists in said national park, only for several of them to be rediscovered far from the site of their disappearance. The Foundation did not act until it received reports of one of the missing hikers being found in France and another near New South Wales, Australia. Subsequent interviews with these individuals produced inconsistent descriptions of the event, even after the use of Subject 301A1, retrieved in France, described the transfer as a floating sensation with a mild forward impetus, accompanied by the ringing of thousands of huge bells and smelling like wet dog and wood smoke, but having no other sensory components. However, Subject 301A2, retrieved near New South Wales, Australia, described it as a floating sensation with no sense of forward momentum, but including a salty taste, prickling feeling, like a foot going to sleep over the entire body and being able to see stringy stuff surrounding the subject. Both subjects were administered a Class A amnestic and released. While searching for the anomaly at said national park, agents S and R accidentally entered SCP-301. They disappeared for approximately minutes until the signals from their locator beacons were reacquired kilometers and kilometers from their last recorded position respectively. Agent S's body was recovered by a deep water retrieval team, 43 kilometers south-southwest of India. Agent R was recovered near Angola, suffering from exposure, malaria, and amoebic dysentery. Foundation personnel were able to debrief Agent R before he died. Agent R characterized the teleportation experience as being swept by a strong current that stank of shit. He also stated that he saw flames and reported hearing sand falling and tasting sugar, then dirt, in a repeating cycle. Agent R died two days later. Based on the agent's testimony, SCP-301 was found to be located on a regularly used hiking trail. The Foundation rerouted the hiking trail and built the current facility containing SCP-301. From information gathered from subjects 301A1 and 301A2 and Agent R, it appears that the interspatial region accessed upon entering SCP-301 is experienced differently by each subject. This experience can manifest as a wide variety of sensory phenomena, including tactile, gustatory, olfactory, visual, oral, and kinetic sensations. Experimentation with Class D personnel to further study this aspect of SCP-301 is recommended. A selection of post-experiment analyses are collected in Experiment Log 301-C. Experiment Log 301-A Using remote exploration in conjunction with ongoing live experimentation, we have managed to map out much of the geodesic grid that SCP-301 teleportation follows. While this has resulted in the discovery of a large number of sites that require Foundation monitoring, many of these sites are in locations that make monitoring them a moot point, i.e. the dozens of egress points that open in the middle of the ocean. Dr. Experiment Log 301B After increasing the size of test materials, we finally found that SCP-301 cannot accommodate items larger than itself. If a piece of matter that exceeds SCP-301's 3-meter diameter is placed on SCP-301, there will be no effect. This has been noted for future containment protocols. There is also a minimum limit for what SCP-301 can accommodate. We filled the containment room with easily detectable gases, as well as bombarding SCP-301 with radioactive particles. However, there is no evidence of any of these substances being successfully transported. The prevailing hypothesis is that SCP-301's minimum limit is based on density rather than size. Solids and liquids are affected, 
while gases and individual molecules are not. Dr. Experiment Log 301C Entries include subject identification number, egress point, and trip duration, followed by a listing of major sensory elements of the teleportation experience. Note that, for recovery purposes, all test subjects are equipped with a remote beacon harness that reports the subject's GPS coordinates to a Foundation satellite every 15 seconds from anywhere on Earth. Subject D05738 Egress Point Iowa, United States Duration Minutes Kinetic None Visual None Auditory None Olfactory None Tactile Sensation of slimy tendrils moving over subject's body Gustatory None Other notes None Subject D09983 Egress Point China Duration Minutes Kinetic Floating sensation as though suspended in liquid. Visual. A red transparent liquid environment. Subject reports seeing many red blood cell-like objects of approximately 3 centimeters to 50 centimeters in diameter. Subject also reports seeing a very large shadowy object moving in the distance. Auditory. None. Olfactory. None. Tactile. None. Gustatory. Coppery taste. Other notes. Subject reports feeling as though they are about to drown throughout duration of transfer. Subject. D25684. Egress point. Mexico. Duration. Seconds. Kinetic. Rapid flying sensation. Visual. Subject reports seeing the terrain they would normally have traveled through to reach the end point of the teleportation process. They also report being unable to see their body. See below. Auditory. Rushing wind. Olfactory. Fresh bread. Tactile. None. Gustatory. None. Other notes. Subject also reports seeing a variety of semi-transparent organisms during transit. These creatures data expunged. Subject D56001 Egress Point Germany Duration Minutes Kinetic None Visual None Auditory None Olfactory None Tactile None Gustatory None. Other notes. Subject retrieved exhibiting strong schizophrenia interspersed with lengthy periods of catatonia. This is the first time exposure to SCP-301 has resulted in this level of mental trauma. Subject. D-56187. Egress point. Near Brazil. Duration. Seconds. Kinetic. Gentle forward movement. Visual. Unknown. Subject rendered blind and cannot recall any visual stimuli from his time in SCP-301. Auditory. None. Olfactory. None. Tactile. Spots of cold moving across the left arm. Gustatory. None. Other notes. First instance of exposure to SCP-301 causing a physical change in subject. Subject D58092 Egress Point Near Laos Duration Minutes Kinetic Free Fall Visual None Auditory A repeating complex multitonal scale. Foundation staff are currently attempting to recreate this scale. Olfactory Acetic Acid Vinegar Tactile. None. Gustatory. None. Other notes. Those sensors reported a second delay between the subject entering SCP-301 and reappearing at the destination. 
D58092 insisted that she had been in SCP-301 for several days. The possibility of a time dilation effect should be investigated. Subject D60014 Egress Point Near Canada Duration Seconds Kinetic Flying Sensation Described as Oddly Slow Visual Subject reports seeing an unknown number of interlocking gears as far as she can see. Auditory Grinding Gears Olfactory Machine Oil Tactile None Gustatory None Other Notes Upon return, subject exhibited an unusual fascination with machinery. Three days later, Subject D60014 began asking personnel about several mechanical SCP objects, including a number of other SCPs, designation numbers expunged, and displaying knowledge about them that only level 4 or higher staff could know. Subject interrogated and terminated, 15 days ahead of schedule. Subject D60445 Egress Point Near Siberia, Russia Duration Minutes Kinetic Unknown Visual Unknown Auditory Unknown Olfactory Unknown Tactile Unknown Gustatory Unknown Other Notes Subject found bisected along the coronal plane. Cause unknown. Subject D61429. Egress point near Florida, United States. Duration minutes. Kinetic floating. Visual painfully bright white light. Auditory shouting voices like everyone in the whole world was shouting at me at once. No individual words could be discerned. Olfactory, none. Tactile, pain over the entire body, described as like having red-hot needles stabbing every inch of me. Gustatory, none. Other notes. Subject reports being watched and being judged by unknown entities. Subject D62225 Egress Point Near Niger Duration Minutes Kinetic Unknown Visual Unknown Auditory Unknown Olfactory Unknown Tactile Unknown Gustatory Unknown. Other notes. Several life forms of the types described by D25684 appear with subject. Subject is killed and life forms data expunged. Area is sterilized. Item number SCP-201. Object class Euclid. Special containment procedures. No personnel are to come within 40 meters of SCP-201 at any time. Any and all work done with SCP-201 is to be performed via remotely controlled drone. Any personnel entering the containment area must be accompanied by two members of security. All personnel in containment area must wear a restraint harness with safety rope attached to the wall. Rope will allow access to within 3 meters of the minimum safe area. Exceeding this distance will result in physical removal from containment area and formal discipline. Those affected by SCP-201 are to have time and date of exposure, disappearance, and return, along with any and all personal information recorded in log Subjects who appear are to be recovered as soon as possible by agents and debriefed immediately. Description SCP-201 appears to be a very old piece of medical equipment, superficially resembling an IV stand, but with many other glass and metal items attached to it. SCP-201 stands 1.8 meters, or 6 feet tall, and has a mass of 36.5 kilograms, or 80 pounds. 
The metal portions are made of steel and brass, and various parts are connected with rubber tubing. The two IV bags are porcelain and are open at the top. SCP-201 was recovered in hospital in a long unused storage area. No record of SCP-201 appears anywhere in hospital records. Entering within 30 meters of SCP-201 can result in the subject being displaced into an alternate reality. This effect is apparently random, with some subjects remaining totally unaffected after exposure to SCP-201. Those affected will cease to exist in our reality between 1 and 48 hours after initial exposure. Durations of displacement vary between a few hours and upwards of 8 years. Time spent in this alternate reality can vary greatly from actual time elapsed in our reality. This alternate world appears identical to our own, with these exceptions. It is apparently in a state of constant twilight, with no sun or moon visible at any time. Large banks of very dense gray fog travel very low to the ground. These fog banks are unaffected by wind and can make exposed skin feel very sticky and dirty. There is no plant or animal life anywhere. All places of human habitation, including major cities, appear as if all life suddenly vanished in the same instant. Most, if not all, electrical systems appear to be broken or without power. The air will randomly take on a gray-brown tint, accompanied by strong wind. Subjects displaced to this alternate world report initial surprise and curiosity, which are shortly replaced with very strong feelings of loneliness and fear. The severity varies widely with individual subjects and with the time of displacement. Upon the end of displacement, subject will reintegrate from this alternate world to our own, which can cause a great deal of shock especially in urban settings. Most subjects who remain displaced for more than three months suffer lasting psychological damage, consistent with being sequestered within solitary confinement. In addition, reports of intermittent, fragmentary broadcasts have been returned by subjects appearing to repair power to media devices, such as televisions and radios. It is unclear if these are real or the product of the degraded mental states of those remaining long enough to complete said projects, but reports consistently resemble automated messages prepared by the Foundation in contingency for XK-class scenarios. Testing will commence if viable samples can be recovered. Lesson complete. To continue with your orientation training, subscribe to SCP Orientation right now and make sure you don't miss any of our upcoming videos.